In regards to your speech and the scaling issue, which out of the two primary solutions, B and SegWit, do you think is the best? And also, could you just explain the advantages and disadvantages in each one? Yeah, thank you. So, um, I won't take a position on scaling options for a simple reason. I think we will do all of them. We will do um, SegWit. Segregated witness is an architectural change to the structure of a transaction that removes the signatures from inside a transaction and places them in an extension of a transaction. It solves uh, a number of problems, including transaction malleability, uh, quadratic hashing, which is a problem that occurs that can lead to denial of service. Um, it allows for second layer implementations, such as Lightning Network and other things like that. Um, and it extends the capacity of Bitcoin um, by at least a factor of two, possibly 2.7, based on some estimates, depending on how many people use it. We're going to do SegWit. It's a good tested solution. It's available today. I think it's going to happen before the end of the year. I was more optimistic at the beginning of the year when it was first proposed, and then it received a lot of pushback. Um, I am still optimistic that it will happen. And then we will also increase the base block size, and with SegWit, multiply that base block size increase by two at least, and get four to eight megabytes of capacity in Bitcoin. And then we are going to implement Schnorr signatures and maybe a bunch of other technologies. Um, SpoonNet, uh, which is a refactoring of the block header to introduce some new capabilities and flexibilities into the system. Maybe flexible transactions. Um, maybe uh, different types of digital signature algorithms. All of the above. Scaling is not something that is solved once. Scaling is a moving target. As you achieve each level of scale, that opens the door for new applications. Those applications immediately consume all of the available capacity that you just made available. And the problem starts again. We have seen this. The internet has been failing to scale for 25 years. Oh, Usenet is full of spam. What are we going to do now? Oh, let's scale up UUCP. Oh, email is impossible to route. It takes days to get it across the internet, and the fees are so ridiculous. Oh, we solved that. Oh, wait, now everybody's using email. What? Image attachments? How the hell are we going to route all of that? <laughs> oh, damn. They figured out image attachments. Porn is flowing all over the network. <laughs> HD porn. <laughs> VR. Audio. We can't do audio on the internet. Are you crazy? We don't have the capacity for that. And that got upgraded. And then it was video, and then it was high def video, and then it was Netflix and YouTube and everybody watching video on the internet. And as soon as we solve these problems, we create the opportunity for new problems. Because if you gave me ten times the capacity on the internet right now, all across the world, as an internet engineer, what would I do? Use it instantly, all of it. <laughs> VR 360 4K streaming video to everyone <laughs> of the muffin I'm eating in the cafe while mobile. <laughs> Done. Gone. All of the capacity gone instantly, right? And you give me 10x again. And it, oh great, fantastic. Holographic 3D VR. <laughs> Simulations of entire worlds, virtual worlds being transmitted. Oh, by the way, download my AI. It's only six petabytes. <laughs> Don't you have good 25G service on your mobile? <laughs> scaling is something that is a moving target, because scaling is an aspirational goal that engineers look at and say. What more could we do if we had scale? You have a system that allows you to do global transactions without borders, that delivers a level of planetary scale immutability for every one of those transactions. Instantaneously, open to anyone in the world, outside of the control of governments and banks. It costs a dollar, maybe two. Boo-hoo! And we're going to make it cheaper and faster, and then as soon as we do, people will want to put more data on the blockchain. 
and then more data on the blockchain, and the rate of transactions will increase, and we will reach visa scale. And six months later, we will reach two times visa scale, because we're on an exponential curve, and they're on a linear one. And, and one year later, we're ten times visa scale, and then we're talking about micropayments between Internet of Things devices that are buying priority access to a, a traffic lane for an emergency vehicle by bribing the other cars to move the hell out of the way. Why not? I can invent ten other applications that would chew up all of the capacity of the Bitcoin network today. And that's what everybody's going to do. Scaling gets fixed by trying new, new solutions to each problem as they come along. And we will never fix scaling. All we can hope to do is fail gracefully for 25 years, just like the internet has. And if we do that, the world's our oyster. Right? We get systems that are massive, scalable, and impact everybody's life. But we don't solve scaling. So we're going to do all of the above. And I'm a fan of anything that works, is technically sensible, is not disruptive, it's maintainable, um, and it doesn't violate some of the core principles of decentralization. It doesn't give power to anyone. We can change the rules as often as we like. We should not appoint rulers in order to do that. <laughs>